नमस्कार आई वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ राजस्थान संस्कृत अकेडमी एंड द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ आर्ट एंड कल्चर राजस्थान टुडे ऑन द बर्थ एनिवर्सरी ऑफ महाकवि कालिदास अ वर्ल्ड पोएट विश्व के कवि कालिदास द ग्रेटेस्ट पोएट ड्रामेटिस्ट ऑफ संस्कृत लैंग्वेज फॉर होम इट इज सेड दैट वी स्टार्ट काउंटिंग ग्रेट पोएट्स विद हिज नेम सो बिफोर हिम और आफ्टर हिम नो अदर पॉइंट कैन इवन बी कम्पेयर्ड विद हिज जीनियस पुरा कविना गणना प्रसंगे कनिष्ठिका अधिष्ठि कालिदास अद्य तत्तुल्य कवेरभा अनामिका सार्थवती बभूव ही इज काउंटेड द फर्स्ट ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट पॉइंट्स ऑन द स्मॉल फिंगर बट वी कैन फाइंड एनी अदर नेम्स आफ्टर हिम सो द नेक्स्ट फिंगर इज राइटली नेम्ड अनामिका दैट विच कैन नॉट बी नेम्ड एंड दे फॉर द लिस्ट हैज ओनली वन नेम ऑन इट Kalidas For all those who wonder if such high praise is an exaggeration let me assure you that Kalidas is regarded not only as the greatest of Sanskrit poets a mahakavi or a teacher of poets kavi kul guru by Sanskrit scholars but he is also a universally acknowledged author par excellence compared with the greatest writers of the world like William Shakespeare Dante and Goethe Undoubtedly he deserves all these laurels but just like many other great sanskrit writers of his era a lot of myths folklore and legends surround the early life of kalidas calling him a great fool an ignorant simpleton an illiterate villager married by treachery or scheming to a princess vidyotama he was insulted by her at first but later after being blessed with great wisdom either due to his hard work or blessing of goddess kali as the myths go he is welcomed by her with asti kashchit vag vishesh and because of these words only we discover the real mahakavi kalidas in his three great lyric writings which he presumably based upon these very three words turning them into the talisman that opened a treasure trove of great poetry an exceptional literary beauty asti becomes the first word of kumara sambha birth of the warlord kartike asti uttar syam dishi devatatma himalayo naam nagadhiraja with kashit he begins meghdoot the cloud messenger kashit kanta virah guruna swadhikarat pramattah etc and from vag vishesh he uses vagarthiv sam prakto vagarth pratipatiye to begin the raghuvansham the dynasty of raghu an epic these three and the other four works abhigyan shakuntalam malavika agnitram mitram vikram varshiyam and ritu samhar combined born him the epithet of shakespeare of india as besides william shakespeare he seems to be the only author in the whole world who has created both poetry and drama with equal brilliance both of them were admired by their contemporaries praised by critics and their writing is enjoyed by learned scholars as well as loved by the masses with a universal appeal and popularity sir william jones was the first philologist and indologist to refer to kalidas as our illustrious poet the shakespeare of india in the foreword to his translation of shakuntalam followed by great scholars like dr silvan levy dr rider and many other who have also played glowing tributes to kalidas so monia williams who has praised the richness of his poetical genius exuberance of his imagination and his knowledge of human heart depicted in raghuvansham and shakuntalam also compared him with shakespeare In fact, Abhigyan Shakuntalam was one of the first Indian books to be so well known in the whole world for its storyline, for the depiction of nature, and for the epical vastness of its scope. The great German author uh, and scholar Goethe has very effusively praised Abhigyan Shakuntalam with his words, "Wouldst thou the young year's blossoms and the fruits of its decline?" and all by which soul is charmed and en- enraptured feasted fed would you the earth and heaven itself in one soul name combine i name the o shakuntala and all at once is said these effusive praises bring us to the question 
How do we today place Kalidas as an author with an universal appeal, a world poet? Do we find his creations having themes that go beyond time and place of origin, nationality, even language and resonate equally among peoples of all nationalities, all languages, all cultures? The answer is yes on all the counts. His chief claim to this universal appeal is the description of nature in his writing. If William Wordsworth found his God in nature, Kalidas establishes the oneness of nature with human beings, the intermingling of the life of man and of nature, Prakriti and Purush, become indistinguishable in his writings because he wrote of coordination between humans and nature and advocated that humans and nature should stay in close harmony as nature inspires all creation and all endeavors by human beings. Uphavre girinam sangadhe chanadinam dhiya vipro ajayat. He testifies that if human beings harm nature, it is harm to human life itself. We cannot survive without let, letting nature be in its pristine pure existence. And that is what makes his writings immortal. His lyrical treatise Meghdutam is a profound testimony of seeing the world through nature. In fact, the message of love and longing of the lonely Yaksh is his, in his most popular lyric poem where the cloud or Meg is personified as a Dut, a messenger. The personification becomes very vivid as rivers, animals, fruits, plants all become companions of the cloud in his journey uh, of sending the message of love. For example, Gatyut Kamal Pad Kamal Kayati Taire Mandar Pushpe Klant Chedye Kanak Kamle Karan Vibram Abhishicha. His message of love is depicted in these beautiful words as a message not only from the Yaksh to his lady love, the Yakshini, but to the whole world. Through nature, not only clouds, but flora and fauna of the whole of central and north India. Hills, trees, birds, rivers, flowers, all are presented in an enamoring manner so that the reader can actually watch the scenes or the description like a pictorial presentation as an integral part of the wistfulness and the pain of viraha or separation of the yaksh. Dhumra Jyoti Salil Marutam Sannipat Kwa Megha Sandeshartha Kwa Patukarane Pranibhi Praprani Yaha so a non-living entity made entirely of vapor, smoke and water, Dhumra, Salil and Maruta becomes a messenger with intelligence and human senses. He also paints an accurate picture of various geographical places on the journey from Ramgiri where the Yaksha is exiling to Alkanagri and all descriptions are comprised of natural places and natural scenery of the whole of North India. The timelessness of this appeal of nature is very poignantly uh, described by Gurudev Ravindranath Tagore in his poem in 1889 when he says, In a gloomy closed room, I sit alone and read the Meghdut. Ah, supreme poet, that first hallowed day of Ashar, on which in some unknown year you wrote your Meghdut. Tekor was so stirred by the musical work that he almost yearns to go back to the time the lyric was created on Ashara Se Prathama Devase. Again, in Abhigyan Shakuntalam, Shakuntala is a manifestation of nature itself. She is a Prakriti Putri left with the Shakunt bird by her mother Menaka on as an infant. She grows up in the lap of nature. There is no artifice in her, no embellishments, no adornments, no indicements, only innocence and closeness to nature. Nature is her main companion. She gives selfless service to all natural objects around her, trees, shrubs, birds. In fact, the fawn, the young deer, Dirgupanga is like a child to her. She marries her creeper sister Vanajotsna to the mango tree. This is how close she is to nature. The young fawn refuses water from the hands of a stranger but clings to the apron of Shakuntala as she has healed his injured mouth with the Ingudi herb. Kalidasa's other lyric, Ritu Samhar, is a veritable celebration of nature in its 
full glory in India, describing all the six seasons with a gorgeous medley of sensory descriptions of sight, sound, smell, etc. Prachanda Surya, Spraniya, Chandrama, etc. Summer is described with comparing the scorching sun with the ritual fire of Havan Kund, flaring up the peacock, the snakes, wild boars, all animals use all kinds of devices to beat the summer heat. He describes the Himalaya with a detailed and vivid account in the epical poem Kumar Sambhav, especially the stanzas in the beginning of the first canto with the residence of Lord Shiva, the huge Devda trees, saffron plants, origin of river Ganga, the Himalayan snow are described with lots of beautiful imagery. Anantaratna Prabhavasya Yasse Himam Nasobhagya Vilopijatam Eko Hitosho Guna Sannipate Nimajati Indo Kiruneshu Anka. Thus, we can sum up that the contemporary reader would be interested in his uh, translation of nature from the transformation of nature from a nurturing mother, the mother earth, to a beloved one, even to a companion, a friend. And isn't this so relevant in today's issues of climate change and conservation biodiversity? Uh, so much so that some of the modern critics have called Kalidasa's poetry as eco poetry. It was indeed an extraordinary talent that, on one hand, from nature he receives inspiration for his poetry, while on the other hand, he maintains the human touch. So it's not mere literary descriptions that we find in his work, but we also discovered that Kalidas is a poet of the essence of human experience or the human values that resonate with everyone and these values become his forte. For example, in his epic Raghuvansham, we find the greatest of the kings serving the cow Nandini as if she is his own child. We find also in Raghuvansham a series of dramatic instances of tapasya, tyag, balidan, sacrifices, penance, renouncement of material pleasures. In fact, the greatest of the kings learn the lesson of humanity and humility in this epic. In Kumar Sambhava, Himalaya is ecstatic with joy when his daughter Parvati is born. Prabha Mahitya Shikhyev Deepas Tri Margayev Tri Divasya Margaha. Dr. Ryder has said, no other poet in any land has sung of happy love as Kalidas sang because in all his three plays, plots are woven around love stories and so on in his Mahakavyas and lyric poems. Ryder further says that Kalidasa's love poetry rings as true in our ears as it did in his countrymen's ears some 1500 years ago. Kumar Sambhavam is a saga of love, conjugal harmony and Shingaras of Lord Shiva and Parvati. But love is not viewed just as pleasure here, but as a cosmic principle, more of a union of supreme divinity than just a union of physical bodies. The philosopher Humboldt pointed out that Kalidas describes the influence of nature on the minds of lovers. So that a bee becomes the point of contact for Dushant and Shakuntala in Abhigyan Shakuntalam while the whole of the nature conspires with Kamadev in the union of Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati. The love of a father for his child in the last act of Shakuntala is described with uh, the description of uh, innocent looks of a child, the lisping prattle, artless smiles and playing in the dust. No wonder a fatherly love and motherly love are one, a few of the best descriptions in Kalidasa's work. We also find the highest ideals of greatest heroism and mesmerizing uh, god and godlike characters in his poetry. These characters are presented against the backdrop of social and spiritual idea of India. He made Indian mythology immortal by creating literary masterpieces out of just tiny reference stories from the epics and the Puranas. It is no wonder that Indian philosophy and spiritualism became evident to the world when Kalidasa's work were translated by Western scholars. All that is noble and sublime, all that is aesthetic and pure in Indian culture finds place in his dramas and poetry. 
ब्रह्मचर्य को एग्जिस्ट विद गृहस्थ्य और दाम्पत्य द व्यक्ति निष्ठा और इंडिविजुअल क्वेस्ट ऑफ लाइफ हैज बीन ब्लेंडेड वेल विद समस्त निष्ठा दैट इज द वेलनेस और द ग्रेटर गुड ऑफ द कलेक्टिव सोसाइटी इन रोग जस्ट एज आई सेड अर्लियर इन रघुवंशम वी हैव त्याग तपस्या इन बलिदान इन कुमार संभवम वी हैव द वॉर बिटवीन सत एंड असत दैट इज ट्रूथ एंड ईवल एज इट्स मेन थीम द फोर्थ चैप्टर ऑफ शाकुंतलम इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द लॉफ्टी एंड नोबल वैल्यूज फॉलोड इन इंडियन सोसाइटी काव्यु नाटकम रम्यम तत्र रम्या शकुंतला तत्रापि चतुर्थ को तत्र श्लोक चतुष्टयम ही डिस्क्राइब्स ऑल द सोशल स्टाटा विद इक्वल एप्लॉम सो हिज वर्क्स आर नॉट लिमिटेड जस्ट टू जस्ट पॉम्पस शो और टू रॉयल फैमिलीज और वर्बियोज डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ पोइटिक आर्ट but we find vivid character sketches of villagers fishermen sages urchins dancers artists in short he gives a valid point of reference to historians and indologists who want to know about the society in kalidasa's time his female characters are as brave and intelligent as fiercely and bold as independent and human as they are aesthetically appealing Kumar Sambhavam has the most explicit and vivid description of feminine beauty of Parvati but it is also an account of her tapasya penance and renouncement of worldly pleasure for the attainment of her goal that is the birth of the warrior child Kumar Kartike who would fight and kill the demons Shringar in his poetry is both suggestive as in the B episode in Shakuntalam as well as elaborate in description of conjugal life uh, of lord shiva and parvati in kumar sambhavam kalidas has been a favorite of literary critics not only in india but the world over as he has received critical acclaim for his language diction style and wit because he writes with tenderness simplicity brevity and uses accurate images and descriptions with just the right uh, balance in expression or feeling banubhat has written about his language comparing it with sweet and tender fruits nirgata sunavakasya kalidasasya suktishu preeti madhur sandrashu manjrishu ev jayate he is a master of poetic techniques in his lyric works the whole of meghadoot is in manda kranta meter the chand which gives the right mood to the feeling of pain and longing through this poem whereas ritu samhar uses a variety of the chandas or the meter to bring about the flow and the uh, change of six seasons in the indian subcontinent the ras in his poetry is just like as in wordsworthian poetry a spontaneous overflow of overpowering emotions even the show of his genius is effortless in poetry as well as in the dramatic writings keith has praised him for his brevity of expression richness of content and power of sentiments and emotions and the praise is not undeserved he exploits all literary devices well but he is the master of simile upama kalidasasya is an apt epithet if any for his claim to poetical genius his similes are simply brilliant the most quoted one or uh, is from raghuvansha of the lamp flame sancharini deep shikhe vratro yam yam vyatitay patim varasa narendra margat ev prapede vivarn bhavam sa sa bhumi palam how beautifully the gloom on the faces of the princes uh, when uh, indumati passes them uh, just like a deep shikha or a lamp wherever the lamp passes there is light and when the lamp has passed away the light goes and there is only gloom or darkness he has helped in the in-depth and detailed understanding of various characters from the indian mythology and puranas by his deep understanding of the human psyche thus we find lord shiva uh, trying to convince parvati against the very idea of marrying her by speaking ill about his own way of living his uh, uh, terrifying attire and the ghosts and demons who stay with him as companions even though he is not able to convince parvati but that's another story 
We also find the character of Dushyant being put on the on par with that of Hamlet from William Shakespeare for his indecisiveness and for his mental weakness. We find lots of human infallibilities and weaknesses and uh, various kinds of court politics and treasure in Malvika Mitram as well as Vikram or Varshiyam. While the whole concept of Raghuvansh is to establish the human angle of politics and rulership by great rulers like Raghu, Aj or Lord Ram. Kalidas has also had a great influence on several Sanskrit works and all Indian literature. He had a great impact on Rabindranath Tagore and many other Indian writers, poets and uh, dramatists. Meghdut's romanticism found, is found in many later works. In fact, lots of uh, later poets wrote Sandesh Kavya just like Meghdutam was written. Sanskrit plays uh, by Kalidas influenced uh, various plays in the late uh, 18th and early 19th century not only in India but also in European literature. According to Dale Carnegie, the father of modern medicine, Sir William Osler, always kept on his desk a poem written by Kalidas. To quote a great scholar, if ever a man born immortality by what he thought and wrote rather than what he was, Kalidas is he. Plays, poems and his writings are all that remains of him. No tomb, no sculptured inscriptions, no city even whose proud citizens may point and claim that this is where Kalidas lived and worked. It is only his great literary works that made him what he was. We find him saying in Raghuvansh with great humility, Mandaha kavi yashaha prarthi gamishyami uphasitam pranchula bhe phale lobad udbahure vahamana that I am just a small person with small hands trying to capture a fruit at a great distance but we find that he was not a small person but a literary giant. In fact, it is his great literary works that make him what he was, a world poet, Vishwake Kavi. In fact, the contemporary world, the contemporary reader would be as interested in reading the great genius of Kalidas as any scholar or reader 1500 years back. Once again, I thank Rajasthan Sanskrit Academy and the Department of Art and Culture for giving me this opportunity today on the birth anniversary of Mahakavi Kalidas to be able to speak about him and his role as a world poet, a true Kavi of the Vishwa. Thank you.